Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Whilst a lot of the work that I do is statistics and quantitative analysis, from time to time I am involved in qualitative research projects as well. Today we're going to look at an AI tool that can help with the analysis of qualitative data, and it can also run AI-driven interviews. So these are two really powerful things that are quite different from a lot of the tools we've looked at so far. There's a lot of tools out there that will just very generically summarize data, and there's tools that will let you do quantitative analysis. But this one today, AI Lies or ALIs, is the first one that we've looked at that is doing some qualitative analysis. It's a dedicated qualitative tool. Do have a link in the video description, which should, depending on when you watch this, hopefully give you a discount. I've been really impressed by this tool so far. Let's dive in and have a look at some of the key features. So here we are on the homepage, AILives.com. And there's just two versions currently. So there's a light version, which is free, and there is the pro. If we flick that down, attached to the pro, there is also the AI interviewer. So we will have a look at these. Before we get started with looking through the website, one really big thing I wanted to highlight from their promo materials is this here. So they have definitely in their promotional materials and the FAQs really had a good focus on data security. So we can see here they're encrypting the data. No one can view the data. This is going to be really, really important for any kind of interview data that you're trying to put in. And they're not using your data to train the AI models. And then they get in into actually some very specific things like GDPR compliance and these are a really big deal. So we can see that they are taking this data security seriously and I think that immediately puts them ahead of things like ChatGPT where it's just a wee bit vague. There is the option to turn off the data retention but it is actually something you have to opt out of even then it's maybe a little bit questionable. Whereas here, because they are this dedicated qualitative tool, they're thinking really carefully about it. So let's have a scroll down their main page before we log in. And so you can get a basic analysis for free. The light version actually does a reasonable amount. It's pretty good. You can also do a demo with an AI bot. So for those who are trying on a very tight budget to be able to do interviewing, having an AI voice interviewer is really amazing. Not only does it mean that you are going to be able to interview more broadly, but it's going to let you interview far more people than you might have otherwise had the budget to do. In terms of the analysis, it takes all of the regular document types. And not only is it just summarizing, but it is focusing on things like thematic analysis. So proper qualitative analysis, not just a large language model trying to fumble its way through a summary. We can see here as the little promo video scrolls through some of the different things that it can do. And when we come down, we've got some nice use cases here, each of these on a pop out. And we can see that again, really proper qualitative methods here. Things like grounded theory, discourse analysis, ethnography, so it is actually going to be hopefully producing something for you that is much more fit for purpose than a generic large language model. So those are for the academia tab. We can see if we flick over to evaluation, market research and UX. Again, the kinds of things that we would be doing interviews or focus groups to try and find out about. The plans Basically, it's just the free plan and the pro plan. Although if you worked at an agency, you might be able to go one step further, go for an enterprise plan where you can probably negotiate with them some details there. We can see that on the free plan, we get the basic analysis and then the pro plan, we get advanced analysis and we get the AI interviewer and the AI interviews you're adding on at $3 per interview. So not free and that would add up over time. But if we consider the cost of what an interviewer, a human interviewer would cost, it would certainly be substantially more than that. To test the free version, you don't even actually need to log in. We can just click the drop down here, choose basic analysis, and just here live on the site, we can drop in our files and get it to do the analysis. So it's not gonna save it for us. We'll need to take whatever we do away with us, but we don't even need to log in to have a go of that. If we are on the pro plan, then when we log in, very, very basic interface here, we've got any files we've put in, 
details on our subscription. And then we've got the drop down here where we can now access advanced analysis. We can give it Excel files, we can give it uh, docs, so Word docs or PDFs, and we've got the AI interviewer there as well. Working in the advanced analysis, we can set up a project because I've logged in, we are able to actually set up a project, retain what we're putting in here. I'm going to give it three different interview transcripts. We can see the transcripts in there. These are synthetic data. Really important if you are doing research, you have ethics approval or by an IRB, if you're an American terminology, then you have communicated what you are going to be doing with your data. So these are actually synthetic data. I have mocked these up with the help of ChatGPT, but it's going to be sufficient for us to be able to do some of our testing. When we come down, we can see we've got different options here. We'll take a few of them and we'll just see how it goes. We don't have different categories since we only have three interviews, but we'll try a couple of these others and see what it says. We've also got optional instructions here. And so that is just language of the response for the time being. Presumably since they've made this as a pop out, there'll be more that they will add over time. Okay, so I'm gonna tick all of these top four this fourth one probably not super valuable to us since we've only got the three interviews so it'll run into the same problem as the comparing across categories so the frequency will just be one ones or twos or threes but let's see what happens we can get the next screen so forget themes we can either have ai generated themes or we can provide our own so if we provide our own we can see we've got a drop down there we can give it additional prompting uh, not going to do that for these get answers to questions so for getting answers to the questions gives us one box then if we want to add more we've got a little plus sign and so these three interviews that i've marked up they are three different perspectives on the issues around ai and university assignments there's a student there's an academic and there's an administrator and so these questions here the first one how do the views of the participants diverge i think that should give us something interesting and meaningful the second one i've kind of given a bit of a nonsense question so which interviewee seemed most Correct. It shouldn't really give us an answer to this, but I'm just curious on how it will react. Again, not going to add any instructions. This is our first time through playing with this. And then frequency analysis, each theme and research question. And we could have other questions, but we're not going to. So we've set all that and then we'll set this going. We get this pop-up saying that it could take up to an hour for our project. Certainly I think for this one, it's not gonna take anywhere near that long. These are not particularly long interview transcripts. So let's see how long it takes though. It will give you a notification. So if you were working on a really big project, it's nice that you wouldn't need to just sit and wait. It will give you a ping when it's done. All right, so it took about five minutes. We get this link here. Let's see how well it did. So on our project, we start the top of the page with a pretty comprehensive table of contents. And then we've got a couple of action buttons here. So we can download this to a variety of different formats. We can add themes and questions and we can chat to generate a custom report. Starts off with a summary. And this is pretty good, certainly is in line with our faux interviews that we had provided. So it's done a really good job. We can also flick between three different interviews. So the summary is all of them put together. And then at the bottom of the box, we can flick between the three. And I noticed that for each of the themes, that was the same as well. So we've got summary, we've got shared viewpoints, we've got unique viewpoints, and then we can flick back and forth between and we can see that it has been giving us little links here to be able to actually reference the things that are said. So much less likely to get hallucinations out of that since it is sourcing and referencing. So it's sourcing the information from the interview transcripts and then it's referencing. The only thing that I could see could happen is maybe if you were using a vague term, it might misinterpret at some stage, but so far pretty good. Gives us quotes. So if we're writing up an article or a presentation and we need some specific quotes, it can do that as well. So key quotes, can download those. And then we come further down and we have more themes. So personalized learning experiences. Definitely a big part of where AI can 
make a positive difference in learning environments. See, we've got some quotes there. And then this is quite nice. We can see filled out with some key quotes that we didn't really get in that previous box. And we can see frequency graphs, not very useful to us here, but in a proper study, certainly something that could be helpful. So I gave a really nice summary of how the participants' views diverged. So giving shared and then the unique viewpoints, again, referencing it, giving some key quotes as well. Didn't give me anything for my question about who was more correct. Not sure if maybe I just didn't hit save properly to add that second question. First one, though, it's done a pretty good job of. So if we wanted to go more into, say, grounded theory or other qualitative methods beyond just the identifying themes, the way that we'd be doing that would be in those optional instructions. So that would be giving guidance to the system on using particular methodologies. They have a nice demo of the AI interviewer. Let's have a go. First thing is we get to put in some information. If you're setting up your own interviews, then you can set up what information you want from your participants. See how we go with this demo. Welcome. I am an AI interviewer. In this interview, we will delve into your experiences with the Let's Start program. To start, can you share about what you did in the Let's Start program? I'm not sure what the Let's Start program is. Could you clarify if you have participated in any similar programs or initiatives that focus on skill development. So you can see that I had a little bit more back and forth with the AI interviewer. The AI interviewer is actually the one that is figuring out the progression of questions once you set it up. We can take a look at the back end of it to see how it gets set up in a second. At the moment, it feels perhaps a little bit clunky. You need to click the button to say reply to AI interviewer. With this demo, they've set it up that you have 60 seconds worth of response time. It takes a second to transcribe and then for the AI to think of the next question. I think as algorithms and machines get a bit faster, that will be improved. I think the thing that will also really start to set this apart is once they have an avatar there. So currently, we've just got this chat window. Probably be just as quick to be typing answers in. But I think once there was an avatar in it, felt like a conversation then at some stage in the future this is going to be something that is pretty powerful for doing your own interviews so looking at the back end for you the interviewer or researcher again we need to be in the pro version we go launch an AI interviewer and then we can either use an old one or set up a new one so creating a new one we give the project a name we give a research objective we can choose currently only 20 or 30 minutes for the interview. Hopefully that becomes a bit more flexible. And then we have our first question. We've got questions and we can add a plus there to add some more on to the end. And then how do you want the AI interviewer to end the interview? So we saw from that demo where depending on how I answered, sometimes it looked like it skipped to the next question. But if I didn't really give a clear response, it did try and rephrase and give some prompting like a real person would. We can also choose different languages for the interviewing as well. I could see that being very valuable if you wanted to interview people who say were migrants, spoke a different language from you. You would otherwise need to be recruiting a interviewer who spoke that language or those languages. This gives you the flexibility to be able to work in multiple languages. So again, pretty neat feature. So this has been ALIs and it's been pretty good. If you're looking at doing some sort of qualitative work, this could definitely speed it up. I like that they have separation of academic from UX from kind of market research type analysis and the basic analysis you can test out for free it's going to be a good way of getting a handle of what it can and can't do figuring out whether you want to upgrade to the pro version so i'll link up any discount details in the video description currently the code linden all in capitals will get you 30 percent off of a pro version Thanks for watching. I'll be back really soon with more videos on AI, stats, research, and random stuff.